Okay, so we've had the Winnebago Revel for about a month, uh, a little over a month, and I thought I'd make a video showing some of the things we've done to it, some of the things we like about it, maybe some of the things we're not so fond of, and just some tips, tricks, things for those of you that are in the market or have one and just want some ideas. Um, hopefully this will uh, give you a little inspiration and give you some feedback. Thanks for watching. Okay, we've had the Revel now for about a month. Been driving it, lots of little camping trips, and we thought it'd be a good time to give a uh, like a one month short term review. I'll share some of the things I've done to the van and some tips and tricks, things we like, maybe some things we don't like. Um, first off, the first thing I did when I got this back from Forest City was I got rid of all the graphics, all the Revel stuff. It came without any normal graphics or, or the splash graphics that go down the side, but it also had the the black 4x4 logo, the word Revel, the big flying W up on the roof. So I got rid of all that. Uh, I made a video on that, you can find it. Back here on the back I added a uh, it's a step bumper from Van Compass. It's a, they call it the rear tug uh, step and it gives you a couple of recovery points but it also makes a nice step for when you're uh, trying to load the van from the back. It works really good. So I also added these flares over the wheels. Those are from uh, Owl Vans. I think they're made by Terra, Terra Wagon and uh, I think they look a lot better kind of brings the truck or brings the van together just gives it a little more finished look I just kind of looked odd without anything on the uh, upper part of the uh, wheel well another thing I did was uh, applied undercoating uh, you can't really see it but this this space between the tire and the wheel well was was tan in color originally and it just kind of stood out so I sprayed it with black undercoating and I, again, I think that just makes the van look that much better. All right, so uh, starting in the front of the van here, um, this is pretty stock with the exception of the front speaker. Um, I did a video how I disconnected that. The sound quality is so much better without that center speaker. I don't know what the deal is. Mercedes has a, a wacky audio um, arrangement with this van. It's really... Um, it's just it's awful with the center speaker so this makes it way more bearable um, let's see there's one detail that the wife added a little pink sticker for shore power so that we'll put that on when we're at campgrounds so I don't uh, drive off with uh, it connected and rip the socket out of the back uh, that's about it up here as far as storage and whatnot these vans have all kinds of storage um, keep plenty of room for your face masks um, glasses and then beyond that in the 21s they have this upper storage which gives you all kinds of storage potential for bins and and whatnot where did what kind of bins are these these are felt bins from Amazon we bought smaller ones so it fits the three we were able to get our packing cubes in in these two the other one has shoes and then it also leaves room for these magma um, pot set that all fit in the one little thing. There's eight. It's an eight-piece set. Very cool. Yeah, and they don't rattle. Keeps keeps noise to a minimum. Those are awesome. Uh, the one thing we haven't done is we've talked about putting a curtain across here. We just haven't found an arrangement that's reasonable enough in both price and just the design. We're just trying to come up with something simple. So if we're stopping to eat somewhere uh, and we're not settling in for the whole night, we just want something to block this this area off so people can't see that you're in there making, you know, food or whatever. Okay, so uh, inside the uh, van again, the electrical panel. One thing Winnebago doesn't do is label a lot of the switches. So pretty easy for, these are for the, uh, the interior lights and did that and then also did it... Uh, down here for the awning and the awning the the flood I'm sorry the running boards and the passenger flood the awning has its own setup hopefully that makes sense um, inside like like we've talked about there's so much clever use of storage um, down here we have a 
cool little storage area. I've just put an OBD reader in there. Um, those are handy to have if you get a code. I've had a couple that I've cleared. Um, nothing serious, so kind of handy to have that. Uh, let's see. Got anything over here you want to talk about? Behind the door? Um, we have this hanging laundry bag that we found that opens up, and it doesn't matter what the weight is, it, you can still open it up or cinch it tight, and it fits just on the hook. And even when it's filled up with clothing and towels, it still doesn't doesn't you know, prevent you from getting in and out or closing the door. So that's, and it's got an outside pocket for wet items. Cool. We found this over the seat thing that we can just quickly reach from outside. Bug spray, you know, handy wipes, um, gloves, there's a little first aid kit. We got some tools that we keep in here. And so, and so when we have the chair swiveled, we just kind of, we can swivel around very easily. Cool. Anything about the fridge you want to talk about? The fridge fits an amazing amount of stuff. And we added these fridge bars so things don't come falling out when you open the door. And I found this basket at Target. And so it allows for a lot of little things like bags of cheese, packages of hot dogs, little, just little miscellaneous little things that would normally fall out even underneath the fridge bars. And just helps to get a lot more in there. Cool. And then these OXO, these OXO, OXO um, little containers fit really nicely in the, the door and you can keep a lot in them. So. Alright, and we got some rubber, uh, oh, what do you call it, uh, ice makers in there. Uh, one little change I did is I uh, Plasti dipped the Flying W. It was chrome before. Just with all the black trim, I didn't think it looked right, so I just made the decision to go ahead and paint that. Um, one thing I'm still, I still need to do, this switch for the bed, this key switch, I just think it's kind of obnoxious. So I've got a button I'm going to replace. The, there's no need for a key. I'm not, I don't have kids climbing around this thing. So I think I'll just put a, a push button system there to uh, eliminate the key and the potential for snapping it off while I'm just you know, doing things in the van. Uh, this upper bay has all kinds of electrical options. So usually the laptops, cameras, drones, they all live up here. Um, what else do we got up in here? Let's see. Oh yeah, the Garmin InReach, uh, the, the InReach Mini. I got this from Costco. Highly recommend this if you're going to go off boondocking, going um, off the grid. Um, these are these are great machines, but uh, if you have a problem and you're out of cell phone range, you're you're going to be uh, hard pressed to find a way to communicate. That thing uh, does a great job. You can text. There's an SOS button. Love that. So. Other than that, I think uh, we have some two-way FRS radios in there. Uh, I have a, a Yaesu amateur radio handheld somewhere in here too, HT. And uh, that covers that storage area. There's also storage behind the seat where we keep... I have a little dustpan and a broom. And then there's the Shark wand back, which I've... We've used it um, in here five trips so far, and I've not had to recharge it yet. But it does have a little wall charger in here as well. But and there's I, no there's no outlet down in there, right? You just no, I just have up. to pull it out and plug it in some. But I kind of put a pillowcase thing in here so it doesn't rattle as we're driving. Cool. Do we have anything under the seat? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, let's uh, move up. Anything up there you want to talk about? We use this cabinet for all our kitchen things. Um, I've used Tupperware and some more felt bins to keep things from sliding around. Um, this this little bin can, it holds all of our uh, cups and mugs. Uh, I got a little for drying um, little drying mat for washing dishes, and found Tupperware plates that they just stack together and they don't take up much space at all. And there's bowls. And pot holders, and then of course, koozies. Yep. And so all of that just stores nicely up in here, and it doesn't rattle when you're driving. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I was afraid it was going to be a rattle fest. Yeah. And uh, I got this from Canyon Adventure Vans. It's a it's a nice wood cutting board with rubber feet on the bottom, so it, it helps protect the cabinet if we bring in the hot pan or something, or just cutting things up. And found this at Lowe's, 
Uh, somebody else had mentioned this. It's a magnetic, um, what brand was it? Craftsman. Craftsman paper towel holder that just, just um, you know, through magnets, just sticks on the bottom there. And it's amazing, even though this paper towel roll has gotten pretty low, where usually it would be rolling around, it just it stays nice and secure. That's cool. And we got these magnet Oh, hooks. yeah. Yeah, those are cool. But was that, that Amazon or? Yes, those cool. were on Amazon. And then your... Oh, yeah, device. this Guardian... Uh, what do they call this thing? Guardian Angel. It's a light, basically, that um, has different functions. I mean, it's supposed to be for, like, you know, roadside emergencies and whatnot. But it's got a magnetic clamp. It's got uh, um, you a bunch of different modes, but you can have it on lower light settings. But this thing is just really handy. If you're setting up camp and you need a, a bright light real quick, um, it's great. And, you know, if you got to change a tire or something, it might actually, you know, keep somebody from running into you so great battery life and i use it a lot of the times when i'm trying to get the campfire started or when we're unloading the van at a campsite when it's uh dark out so there's that what and we found these air fresheners work really well and they just fit right in here we um we found out when we cooked fish one time that um that does we cooked it inside and that does tend to stink that, up that, the... <laughs> that stuck around for a while uh so we got a little scrubby guy a little holder that we put there uh, in here is the induction, and we found that we got a little twisty thing to keep the cord um, out of the way. And so we found that we could fit a sharp, you know, a large, uh, sharp, sharp knife and three cutting boards underneath it. They're just really flat, slim cutting boards. And so that all fits in there. Um, this is like a little junk drawer, but I found this tray at Target, so you can you fit a lot more in there without worrying it going over. It's a very shallow drawer for some reason, so, so we keep all kinds of little, little multi-tool and little things in there. And this is utensils, cooking utensils, and we found these at Target and also on Amazon there. They all snuggle together. Um, but there are, you know, forks, spoons, and even little knives, some of them have, that, um, slide out. This one, ha this one has, like, a little knife at the, the bottom. So they don't take up much room, and they don't rattle. Nice. And then, this is an amazing drawer, and we fit our Keurig in here, which is just one of the single, single cup ones. You just fill it each time. With bottled water. Yeah, that just fits perfectly in there. I mean, it's like it was made for it. Yeah, and it it works great on the counter. It fits fine, and uh, and it, when we stop sometimes just to get gas, we'll pull over to the parking spot and brew ourselves a cup of coffee and hit the road. Yeah, that was handy coming back from Forest City. Yeah, and so the pantry actually fits quite a bit in here, and I found um, online I was able to order another shelf, and so because before it only had a couple, and there was a lot of just extra in height and so now we can fit you know the important stuff that's right um, plus you know pretty much anything you would really need to use back there i've got like foil you know taller things back there and cool so, yeah so good the size of it can really fit a lot in there all right i guess we need to go into the bathroom let's talk about the <laughs> and here's our bathroom all right so we haven't really made any modifications in the bathroom itself, but um, we bought the bamboo shelf off of Amazon that fits down there. So when you're showering, it's not slippery. Yep. And you can also take it outside for the outdoor shower. That's right. Um, in here, we it came with the two bamboo shelves, but we found that those are just kind of getting our way. Unless we're going to do a long trip at some point, uh, where we're going to be here and have a lot of things that we need to pack, we we just leave those at home. Yeah, and this rod i don't know we probably need to just take that out i, I guess so. it's kind of cool if you got wet clothes or something you want to hang while you're while you're driving that little fan there you can fire it up and it will dry things off but i always end up hitting my head on it and uh it's yeah we not, just don't really use not it. ideal there is a hook right here that if we wanted to hang something to, to dry um, yeah this... so yeah let's talk about that <laughs> so when we bought the van I uh, picked it up in Forest City. So, like I said, we we're going to talk about the good things and the bad things. Um, the bad thing was the shower. The first day that we uh, stayed at the dealership, we were. Um, I took my shower, and then uh, the wife went in to take it. And about a minute into it, she starts making all kinds of racket and yelling, turn off the pump, turn off the pump. 
what had happened was water had gotten under and behind that that switch panel and apparently it just closes the circuit to the the pump for the toilet the toilet pump kicked on filled the the toilet with with clean water and it just started overflowing down off the side of the toilet the the valve was shut so it wasn't dumping it into the black water cassette so water was all over the place she's freaking out we shut the water pump off take it back into the dealer he looked at it they replaced the switch or they said they replaced the switch so the next day we did it again and took a shower and it did the same exact thing so at that point my wife was traumatized and didn't want to ever use the shower again went back into the dealership and what they did was uh applied a pretty good coat of rtv or silicon uh around the switch assembly we haven't had a problem since but in addition the wife decided that this uh what is that thing called? It's a little silicone. It's actually like a little cup, silicone cup holder, but it's got a kind of a nice rounded edge so it, it can actually lay flat because some of the other ones that were bigger, they were just going to have to prop up on top. This one actually lays flat on there and covers. And the, so your theory on that is that it's going to double protect yep. from short... No, we, don't, we really don't have to worry about it now. Okay. But we've taken showers with that and we've not... Not that problem. Knock on wood. The uh, toilet paper holder is kind of clunky the the little rod that goes in there to hold the toilet paper in it constantly falls out so, so we I, took it out yeah i don't think we have anything it's yeah it's just a roll that sits in there so and that works fine um, um this will hold quite a bit of shampoo and conditioner the uh, shower head itself sucks it's a real cheap piece and um we're gonna replace that it, it's got a leak uh you know you, when you turn it on you you can you can uh operate it basically right here it turns the water on and off so you don't waste a lot of water but when it's in the off position stopping the water flow it still drips and it's just it's a very inexpensive piece so i'm going to replace that um yeah so i think that covers the bathroom in oh, great detail this oh, is the best thing that's right so let me see here we yeah get the the mirror so there's us um <laughs> so where'd you get the mirror off of amazon good old amazon and you didn't really want to permanently That's attach right. it so he found uh home depot some removable velcro strips yeah and so if, if at any point we really we do want to take it off we can remove it without damaging the door that's right yeah, it's, it's great. It's cool, and it makes it a lot easier in the morning when you're trying to get ready. It doesn't take me long, but she tends to spend a little more time doing that. <laughs> well, and then it's it's great because with the door open, there's a light right here. Yep. And so it, it's nice and bright, and yeah, that's been a huge... Because surprisingly, or weirdly, Winnebago did not put any mirrors in here at all. Not even a visor mirror. No, yeah, that is weird. That's very odd. Yeah. Here's the bathroom. All right. Okay, so now we're in the uh, the bedroom. The bed's in the lower position, and uh, why don't you talk about some of the things you've done here. So again, we have some more of these felt bins. These are the large size, and so I got these to put on the bamboo shelves. Two of them will fit side by side in the bathroom for the longer trips, but for these our shorter weekend trips um, that we're doing right now, and we keep the bamboo um, at, at home, I just set them here on the bed during the day and then we move them to the front seats when we're um, going to bed. But they, um, for when we're traveling, he likes a weighted blanket, which works out great because the little seven pound weighted blanket just kind of sits on top of them so they don't go flying when you go around the corner. So that... Yeah, if you drive reasonably uh, calm, you'll be fine. If you take a corner hard, you might, yeah, we had I think one, go flying. one time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we found this on Amazon as well. It's charges USB and it's got this clamp, which, on the frame here it just clamps I guess the bed rail um, it just clamps right on that and so at night we've got a fan that points right at our faces yeah and, it's awesome and I don't think we've had to charge this yet either no it's we've used it multiple nights and I don't know what do we put it on medium or something I forget I don't know if we I'm go max sure. but it works it amazing it's just a nice cool uh, breeze and it also does a good job of uh, creating a little white noise for the background and we have forgot to take it down a couple times when we've been driving and it's actually stayed up there but just to be safe we we like to take it off when, when we remember um i got some quick dry towels from bed bath and beyond 
that are, are, are fairly thin and they dry really fast if we just hang it on the hook in the, in the bathroom. Um, so, and they, you can fit, I think I have six in here plus hand towels. And so you, you can fit quite a few of them in there. And then just our shower mat. And on this side, we just, we put our heads up against the window and, um, yeah, that's the best for, for us. We find sleeping with that window cracked or open is awesome. Uh, just if, if it's, you know, not ridiculously cold, it just lets a little breeze in and out and then love that. And, and we attach the little felt mountains with that same removable Velcro as well. Yeah, I don't think we've really done anything else. We got our cords there. Oh, wait, yeah, we did this. Oh, yeah. Why don't you see so, can... um, this is a seat belt to, to, that you can, I guess, clamp the, if you have the bed up. You, it kind of um, keeps it secure. And when you're driving down the road, this would just bang, bang, bang on this. So, we put Velcro on that. So, it just keeps it secure when that's, we're driving. And that's what's supposed to keep the bed from... Uh, Falling, falling down I guess on, if you have it in the raised it. position, there's a, there's a, there's a, I think, I don't even see it, but there's a, the socket that goes into that. It's basically like a seatbelt. Uh, it goes in there and locks it up into the upper position. So I guess in the event that there's some kind of a massive uh, failure that, that wouldn't, uh, that'd keep the bed from falling. The uh, power in the back here is great. You got two USBs plus a 12 volt. What it doesn't have is a place to, to hang or put your uh, your phones while you're sleeping. So we're going to come up with something, either put a net up here or something in that little space just so that we don't, because the, the phone's literally just kind of laid between the mattress and, uh, and the end, edge of the uh, interior there. So that's something we'd like to change. Um, and we found the bed to be very comfortable. I did get a, a nice cushy cover, um, you know, just a just a real you know like a sheet cover mattress cover and then um yeah it's been really comfortable yeah we were kind of concerned it was going to be a a painful experience but we've spent several nights in the van and i've never woken up with back or neck pains or anything like that um the cover for the windows is great this gets real dark at night uh it's got the covers for the front windshield and both driver and passenger door so um you can get the van very dark um can't really say much about the air conditioning we haven't done anything with it it's been cold since we bought it um we did get the smart start i think is i think it's a soft like, start soft start we had them install that at the let's let's an rv um so i can use the little smaller generators and still use the air conditioner so it won't trip the breaker on the ac or i'm sorry on the uh, generator okay so we're in the back of the van now uh show you a couple of things that uh we've we've got here we've got these large husky bins from uh like we got those from home depot uh these are 25 gallon ones we have three in here right yeah. so one of them we keep firewood axe some lights um the solo stove and the the pan or the the whatever that you get. Yeah, yeah the pan set um i think that's pretty much it and then uh these are the camco leveling blocks they're nothing fancy, but they work great. I know some people say they break all the time. I've not had any problems. Uh, above that, we've got seats, right? We've got two chairs, folding chairs, two folding chairs. Visors. That's the visor things for the windshield and the driver passenger window to block out light. Uh, this is an outdoor shower tent, pop-up tent. And we made another video just on the how that goes together it actually makes an amazing setup very quickly um and this what do we have in this bin uh, a couple ottomans for the, the folding chairs we've got the outdoor rug the um, hose in here oh there's the fill hose fill hoses in there there's um, some blankets outdoor blankets in there there's a lot of outdoor things for when we're hanging out outside i think that pretty much covers everything that's going on there the 30 amp power connector and then we've got the surge protector back buried in there uh, i also have a lock to lock the surge protector they're like 300 bucks and you don't want to have a problem and uh, have it gone in the morning so that covers that um one thing i did do is talking about showers i've uh upgraded the um what do you call this just the, the nozzle the nozzle the, the one that comes from the factory is 
it's probably a 50 cent piece it's just awful so this has all kinds of different modes mist shower um so if you're going to do showers outdoors get one of these you're going to you're going to like it i i forget where i bought it it was a company that makes uh like portable shower systems and i'll i'll put a or i'll put something on the uh video to show you where i got it so i think that's about it back here and one one tip that we for the longest time we couldn't figure out when we have the upper this this inside net um and we have it undone during the day so you can see out the back window we could not figure out where how to how to secure it, it kept falling down yeah below. that's right and, I, and there's a little bar in there. And yeah. So then I finally figured out it just, you can just kind of wrap it around and have it resting on top of the bed and just have it wrap it around each side. Yeah. So it's it a, just keeps it secure. Up there. That's a great tip because before it was always just hanging down right here. And it's, it's like if you're trying to get stuff, this was just not good. And uh, again, this shows that, that step, how much, um, wider it is and if you if you're loading or getting in and out of the van this is the best way to go it's actually you can actually stand on it the factory setup there is no nowhere to stand this this is the bumper it's got some non-skid on there but i mean literally you're talking about your toes on there it's not going to give you the um you know ability to stand and load things get in and out safely so that's that's the back of the van. Anything the, else? The third bin has a microwave in it. Oh and yeah. The, and that's where we keep that big, that bag that's full of all the Winnebago manuals and Mercedes manuals. Um, just a couple other miscellaneous things. Isn't that's what's in the third bin, which is where we can access it from inside. Yeah, it's forward. So uh, this works really good when we set up camp. Generally, once we park it, assuming it doesn't need to be leveled. Uh, it, what eight minutes we can have the power connected we can have the chairs out um the solo stove the firewood's out and then put everything back in here shut the back of the van up and uh i mean you're just instantly camping it's it's amazingly uh efficient i really like the speed in which you can uh, set up camp so the uh, cassette um bathroom toilet you know, I had a lot of my friends give me a hard time about it. People were joking about how it's going to be awful and stinky. Um, yeah, it's locked right now, but um, it's ridiculously easy. It does not smell at all. Um, you can dump it into any toilet. You can use uh, dump stations. You're not going to get anything on your hands. I mean, I keep gloves, but it's if you do it correctly, this thing works amazingly well. So... Um, no reservations about recommending the toilet. I, we do add some, we add some chemicals to the toilet, right, babe? Yes. What is it that you add? It's just, I just get a liquid. I can't remember that. I need so it's a, and it's a, so we add a little liquid to the toilet every time we we dump it, and uh, it's a, uh, I guess it's supposed to help break down the toilet paper and the uh, the solids. Uh, oh, here it is. So. That's what we use. It's just a few drops, and we've had no issues. I've had no problems with uh, clogs or anything like that. It's uh, it's a very simple system, and n no uh, <laughs> no smells, no 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 material gets on you. Um, it's don't don't have any concern. If you're worried about the toilet, don't be worried about it. If you use it properly and you you uh, have a ability to find a place to dump it it works great you can get a couple days for two people no problem uh so yeah that works great all right moving back into the van let's see if i can show you a couple things here so we have uh 2173 miles on the van uh, turn off my podcast and uh, let's see here if I can get I'm gonna try and show you what the mileage is as far as gas mileage. Okay, so from the last reset, which was reset when I bought it, so we've put two we've ourselves have put two thousand one hundred and sixty five miles on the van, it's driven sixty four hours. It's averaged um, fifteen miles per gallon and uh average speed is 34 if you're on the freeway and you're driving this thing correctly you know like under 65 it's going to get some really good mileage i mean it, it's uh it's capable of getting 
16, 17 miles per gallon, uh, you're not going to make a lot of friends if you're in heavy traffic. So, you know, that's part of the problem. I don't want to hold up traffic. So sometimes you end up having to do 75. Um, but it's, uh, it's worked really well. Uh, the wife's got a little stool, probably from Amazon, that she uses. She's a little shorter. So when we're driving, she puts that out and she can rest her feet on that. And it's also nice for climbing up into the bed. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, the controls in here are very simple. The heater is almost too simple. Um, there's just not a lot to to talk about here. It's got AC and it's got the the max defrost mode. Um, you can adjust, you know, foot, face, or defrost. But there's not much to it. It's not um, doesn't have the driver and passenger separate. It doesn't, you know, really. The fan is completely manual, so it's not going to do you any. Uh, uh, it's not going to help you. It's just it's a it's a manual system, but it works fine. These switches are they take a little getting used to, but they they work fine. Same with the volume on the the um, the radio, it works good. The navigation, I've I've been real happy with the navigation. It's uh, I think it does good on route planning. It has live traffic. Um, I at first I was still using Waze and, and Google Maps but now I'm starting to use this more just because it's convenient you can actually switch on the drivers um, monitor so you can have your navigation stuff right here but I'm not I don't have a destination pick so it's not going to show anything um, these controls on the steering wheel are really easy to use so if you're driving and you want to just check things out it lets you scroll between things and uh, you can play around with some settings and whatnot. Cruise control works great. It's got an adapt adaptive cruise control. You can adjust your spacing between the vehicle in front of you. It does have a lane keep assist system, which is pretty aggressive. Um, it's kind of weird. It, it basically will, uh, if you get on, uh, approach a, a line, it's going to uh, beep pretty loudly it's an obnoxious noise that it makes and then it will uh if you continue to go over the fog line it actually applies the brakes i believe it's on the opposite side so it's kind of try and pull you away from the uh uh the line which um sometimes it can be a little, little uh, over the top but you can disable it but it by default it's always on um up here you've got the uh the wireless charging for your phone You've got two USB-C power points, and then you've got the one for Android Auto. I think it'll also work with Apple CarPlay, but we haven't done that. Um, that works great. you got cup holders all over the place. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's, like se like nine. there's a ridiculous amount of, of cup holders in this vehicle. Um, not a whole lot else to talk about. Um, but, our mascot since we're so close to the smokies yeah we've there's smoky and bear yes so it's uh normal for a mature <laughs> adult to to have things like that in their vehicle um overhead you've got the controls for the lights there's an sos button a service button there's the sos button i have not used that um <laughs> and uh, you know things that we like about the van so far we love this thing it's been great the worst thing that happened was at the dealership when i bought the van um we had literally driven it maybe 10 miles um just around forest city did a couple of runs to uh, get supplies to get some groceries and we'd stayed in the in the dealership's parking lot for two days and we we're getting ready to go home last uh, thing I was going to do is I was going to bring some donuts by to the, the people at Litson because they were they were really great to work with. I go in, I give them the donuts, go back out to start the van. The van starts up fine and immediately flashes this error code about uh, do not shift gears, do not drive. And the van was dead in the water. I could not get it to to move. And so I went back into the dealership and they came out their their techs looked at it nobody could figure it out they'd never seen it before they called winnebago factory a factory technician came out um and he had all kinds of equipment and laptops and stuff he spent him and i worked on it for about an hour we took the driver's seat out 
we disconnected the battery um, ran through all kinds of checks and we could not get it to pull out of that mode it just every time you start it up it would just immediately say maintenance required do not shift and it would not let you shift it into gear he checked as many of the modules as he could made some phone calls ultimately what ended up happening was we had to take the van it had to be it had to be towed to uh, a mercedes-benz dealer in minnesota so <laughs> the van had 60 something miles on it and it had more miles on the back of a rollback going to Minnesota than it did um, <laughs> of me driving it. So it was a horrible experience. It was snowing out. Um, the Mercedes assist there was trying to uh, override. That's the other thing is if you say the word Mercedes, it's going to bring up this, this um, it's like Siri or Google Voice. So anyway, I'm sorry to go off. Uh, so we ended up spending the night in a hotel in Forest City. They winterized the van for me. Uh, it was a Saturday morning. I called the dealership up in Minnesota. They didn't know if they could look at it. You know, I'm a thousand miles from home and I want to get going. Um, so we drive up to Minnesota. The, the Sprinter Tech had looked at it. When they got the van in the morning, they could not replicate the issue at all. He spent... I forget how many hours he spent hours updating every software module on the van um, did a bunch of drive start stop simulations he he thought it was tied in with a low voltage condition he suspected that the van was just because we had not been driving a lot we'd just been playing with it in the parking lot he thought that the low voltage might have something to do with it but he also did a, a tremendous amount of software updates which uh, that uh, that took a long time but uh, after that, we got in the van and we drove back to Forest City, uh, spent another night there just to, to, cause it was, you know, kind of late in the day when we got the van back, we, uh, drove it from Forest City to Chattanooga in, what was it? 15 hours, 14 yeah, hours, nonstop. nonstop. Cause I was so afraid that it was going to do it again. I would not shut the vehicle off, but, um, and so I thought when I was going to get gas, I'll just pull the uh, parking brake and, uh you know, leave it in gear. Well, the problem is this, this vehicle is so smart. If you put it in park, it automatically, or if you, if you apply the parking brake, it automatically puts it into park. So, um, but ultimately we made it back. We have not had any issues since then. I mean, I'm going you know, knock on fake carbon fiber, but, uh, it's, uh, it's been good. It's been a great van. It's got enough space for two people. Um, I don't, I don't think there's any what, anything that you don't like about it. Um, I really don't like the, the shower situation, well, especially after the, those two days, but I will get used to it. Um, you, how about the bathroom itself, using it just functionally as a... As the bathroom's a, actually, it's been great when we've just stopped for gas yeah. and been able to, or we've parked it for a while on a Cracker Barrel and yep. um, just to get some rest and eat. And um, I, otherwise, I mean, there, there really isn't anything that I can think of that I dislike and the seats are really comfortable yeah for, they're really for good the driving I, I actually i'll take that back i do wish this table was either more of just a rectangular shape or just a little bit bigger because when the two of us when, when one of the chairs is swung around and the two of us are on each side with laptops or just eating it, it is really yeah, cramped that is a little space. tight so yeah i do wish that it, it would have just been a rectangle or, or maybe have a little fold out to enlarge it when you wanted it larger but um the power on this on the 2021 is great we've done a bunch of uh, uh camping where we're not hooked up to anything and ran the uh the stove lights heaters and we've never even i don't think i've ever gotten to 50 percent so far now that'll change when we get into the times where we're using the ac um but between the solar and the alternator on the van, this thing, it's got a tremendous reserve of power from the factory. Uh, had, you know, knock on wood, I have had no issues with the heater, the diesel, or the electric. Uh, the heater, you're going to want to use the electric if you're just trying to keep the van from maybe freezing. It's not going to give you hot water. It's not going to give you enough heat to... Um, stay very warm we the first night we had it we used the electric heater when we were plugged into shore power and uh i think it got in the 20s and the van was f f really cold not i mean it was probably 45 degrees in the van so i complained about it the next day at the dealership and they said well yeah you 
don't use the electric heat when it's that cold you use the diesel heater and since then obviously i learned that the diesel heater the diesel heater will heat this to the point where it's uncomfortable <laughs> yeah you have to actually end up opening a door or you yeah know, a vent to yeah cool it down. yeah the vent works good that little remote for that can move some air through here um we do most of our cooking outdoors now because just to avoid the smell and we don't want to get any grease or oil build up on the ceiling but uh the lighting's really good they've upgraded the lighting on these over some of the earlier ones it's plenty bright um you got a little one right there that you can use we added just a little uh you know one of those stick em lights um it works fine and uh as far as changes and things i want to do i do eventually want to get a rear rack one of those sherpa systems so i can uh uh, mount a box for the Honda generator. I might want to do a suspension upgrade at some point. Uh, the van handles great, but in uh, in some of the driving conditions, when you got big semis and wind, it can be a little squirrely. So um, that's something that uh, I might consider. Anything that you want to get? Um, I don't think so. I think we've gotten pretty much everything on the inside we've talked about. Might get a carpet on the floor at some point. You were talking about doing something down the middle of the... Yeah, I found this one at Kohl's. It's a nice size to fit in that little area. And then what I did find at Camping World, the step right there, this was, this was like an indoor-outdoor step carpet that was didn't have to cut it or anything. It's a perfect size and it just sticks on. Yeah, that was so cool. So that's been nice. Yeah, other than that, it's... Uh... It's good. I think I'll black out the outdoor lights for the, uh, oh, there's the lights on either side of the van that you can use. I'll show you real quick. Oh. So those are chrome and everything else is blacked out and I'm going to end up probably plastic dipping those or doing something to uh, make those um, fit in with the rest of the van. And then, uh, in here, I don't think there's anything else that I would think we're going to... Short term, I don't think there's anything that we're going to need to upgrade. I might might get the rear windows tinted at some point. Um, but with the screens down, it does a great job. You can't see in very well at all during the day. Um, that's about all I've got. It's It's yeah. been a great purchase. We bought this um, back in July when this COVID thing was going on. We were looking around, trying to find a way to get out and you know, not, not be dependent on... Uh, airplanes and hotels and whatnot and ordered this from Litson uh, early July and we were promised a September delivery and it ended up slipping into uh, mid-October but it was well worth the wait have had no real issues other than the trauma with the uh, the transmission thing and I'm hopeful that that is never going to happen again but uh, time will tell and if it does uh, crop up I'll I'll certainly uh probably be posting about it but uh hopefully you enjoyed that tour hopefully i gave you some ideas and tips and tricks and things to uh, uh do with the van and um these are these are really well engineered complicated pieces of equipment but we love ours i mean i have no regrets i wish i would have gotten it about i don't know middle of last year when we were middle of 20 uh, 2020 because of the covid thing when everything was in lockdown this thing is amazing we've gotten Oh, uh, we go to a sushi restaurant. And we'll come in here and have our sushi. Um, you can, you know, we take it just on little day trips where we go, you know, out where we can uh, park and make make a a meal, have a beer. Um, it's very cool. And then you can park this thing anywhere. This thing will fit in any parking spot. Nobody complains uh, in our HOA. So we're we're extremely satisfied with the van. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll keep posting more videos about the, uh, the Sprinter uh, Winnebago Revel. Thanks a lot for watching.